Now we look at buffer tree in a little bit more detail. So first of all, it is essentially a B tree, but we have different branching parameters for the internal nodes and the, and the leaf nodes. The leaf nodes have roughly B elements in them, in other words, between B and B over 4 elements. Whereas internal nodes have between M, M over B, and M over B over 4 uh, degree. Okay. And on top of that, every node has a buffer of size M, um, but only for the internal nodes. Okay. And again, for every node, the buffer is written in the disk somewhere with the node itself. So just to make sure that we understand how the structure looks like, these nodes are stored in the disk. Okay, so this entire structure is stored in the disk. For every node, we also have a location of the disk where it stores its buffer. Okay. All right, so what happened to the updates? So when the updates come, we collect the B elements in the internal memory before doing anything. So in other words, we keep B elements, the most recent B updates, in the internal memory. And on top of that, whenever updates come, we also add a timestamp. So this timestamp is to make sure that we get the order of the updates uh, correctly. Because remember that the uh, uh, updates will replace any buffers. We're not going to process every update immediately. We're going to process them later on. So we're going to accumulate all the updates. So therefore, if we see an insertion for E1, like element 1, and then deletion for element 1, and then the search for element 1, it actually matters in which order we do the operations. And we can figure out in which order we need to do the operation using the timestamps. And that's basically that's a rough idea. Whenever the buffer of an internal node is full, we do a buffer emptying operation, which is a bit complicated. I'm going to look at it next. OK, so let's look at the buffer emptying. So one minor issue here is that the buffers can actually be larger than m because of the uh, recursive buffer emptying operation that we're going to do. This is because at some point when you empty a buffer, you empty a buffer top down so you get some elements from the parents pushed into you, so which means that your, your buffer could temporarily be um, larger than M. To handle this, uh, we assume that the elements in every buffer are in sorted order are distributed in sorted order, but since we're going to receive at most m elements from for every buffer, um, we can have at most m elements in each buffer that are unsorted. And again, I'm not going to go into too much details here, but basically the one issue with the rebalancing is that, uh, or one issue with buffer emptying is that we also need to do rebalance. Because remember, all of these uh, buffers contain updates, which could be insertion and deletion. And if you recall the details of insertion and deletion, every insertion could um, require a bunch of rebalancing operation. Every deletion could have a bunch of merging operations. Those operations are only done once the buffers of corresponding, once we have emptied the buffers. Okay, so if we are processing all the buffers all the way down, then um, once all the buffers are empty, then only we do those operations. This means that while we're emptying the buffer, the tree might actually not be valid. In other words, it might have too much degree or too little degree in some of its nodes. We're going to fix those later once we're done with emptying buffer operation. Yeah. So basically, empty the buffers first, then fix the degrees. And also, we were, when we're emptying the buffer, we only empty the buffers that are full or on the way uh, of the buffers that we need to empty. And I'm going to show you the details in a moment. Okay. So let's look at the first case, which is the internal node buffer emptying. Okay. So we have this internal node. It has a buffer. And we assume that this buffer is uh, full or we want to empty it, basically. Um, this buffer, as we discussed, could potentially have larger than M, but doesn't matter. We load the first M elements into the main memory. That takes um, M over BIOS. It's just to read these elements, the first M elements, into the memory. Yeah. If we have elements in the um, 
in the memory we, we merge that we also do some processings um, of these um, these updates for example if there is a matching pair insertion and deletion we can delete them or uh, and so on so like if you at some point if you have inserted element one and later on if you have deleted element one one then we can just say that the, the total effect of that operation is basically nothing and once we have um, uh, process these elements we push these updates to the buffers of the children and then so we can then recursively empty the buffer of the children after we have pushed all the we have processed all the m all the uh, updates uh, in that node okay so since and of course this takes x over b IOs because uh, where x is the size of the buffer, the total elements in the buffer of that node. What about the leaf node? And um, this is let's say the leaf node over here. Leaf nodes, remember, have a different branching parameter, so they can have between k and k over four elements, and um, you know it also have a buffer. The in this case, we don't have any more children to push to. So at this point, we are almost, we are essentially done with the updates. All these updates have to go to to this leaf node. Um, what we do here is that we read this buffer and then we also read the elements in the leaf nodes, and then we merge them. And but then we cancel again matching insertion deletions. Um, if it turns out that we have too few elements left, then we add these dummy elements. In other words, we essentially fill the space with some elements that we marked that are not part of the uh, input. And um, otherwise, we put the k elements in the leaves, and um, then we can do go ahead with rebalancing. Okay, so that's basically the the rough idea of how this is done.